자 일론 머스크가 올인 서밋이라는 행사에서 요즘 인공지능에 대한 생각 그리고 뭐 콜로서스 최근에 이제 일론 머스크의 X AI에서 만든 슈퍼 컴퓨터죠 그래서 뭐 콜로서스 얘기 그리고 휴머노이드 로봇 옵티머스랑 테슬라 이런 얘기들을 좀 전반적으로 하면서 이 인공지능 요즘에 사실 뭐 주식시장 이슈가 많잖아요 이런 거에 대해서 최첨단에 있는 그가 어떻게 생각하는지 이제 인터뷰를 했는데 한번 보시죠. I think I think they the, the, the... The spending on AI probably runs ahead of, I mean, it does run ahead of the revenue right now. That's, there's no question about that. Um, but the rate of improvement of AI is faster than any technology I've ever seen by far. I, I mean, like, the, the, for example, the Turing test used to be a thing. Now, you, you know, your basic uh, open source random LLM, you r e writing on a friggin' Raspberry Pi probably could, uh, you know, beat the Turing test. Like, like <laughs> the... the, the The good future of AI is one of immense prosperity, where there is an age of abundance, no shortage of goods and services. Everyone can have whatever they want, unless, except for things we artificially define to be scarce, like some special artwork. Um, but, but anything that is a manufactured good or provided service uh, will, I think, with the advent of AI plus robotics, that the cost of goods and services will be will trend to zero. Like, be, I'm not saying it'll be actually zero, but it'll be, every, everyone will be able to have anything they want. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the good future, of course. And, I, you know, in, in my view, that's probably 80% likely. So look on the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> Only 20%, 20% probably of annihilation. It's nothing. <laughs> um, is, the, is the 20% like, what does that look like? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, frankly, I do have to go engage in some degree of, of deliberate suspension of disbelief with respect to AI <laughs> in order to sleep well, because I, I, I think the actual issue, the, mo the most likely issue is like, well, how do we find meaning in a world where AI can do everything we can do, but better? That, that, is, that is perhaps the bigger challenge. Um, you know, you need, you need the sort of end effectors. You need the, the ro autonomous cars, and you need the sort of humanoid robots or ro you know, general purpose robots. Uh, but the, the, Once you have general purpose humanoid robots um, and autonomous vehicles, you really, you, you, you can build anything. Um, and you... and, and this, this, I think that there's no actual limit to the size of the economy. The, you know, the, the economy is, is really just the average productivity per person times number of people. That's the economy. And if you've, if you've got humanoid robots, that can do, where there's no real limit on the number of humanoid robots, um, and, and they, they can operate very intelligently, then, then there's no actual limit to the economy. You guys just turned on Colossus, which yeah. is like the largest private compute cluster, I guess, of GPUs anywhere. Is that, uh, is yeah, that right? It's, it's, the, it's the most powerful supercomputer of any kind. By AI has entirely gone to NVIDIA. But there are people with alternatives, and you're actually one with an alternative. Now, you have a very specific case, because Dojo is really about images and... Large images, huge video. So um, yeah, the, I mean the, the, the Tesla problem is different from the, um, you know, the sort of LLM problem. Uh, the, the nature of the intelligence actually, what, what matters in the AI is is different um, to to the point you just made, which is that in the in Tesla's case, the context is very long. So we've got gigabytes of context. Gigabytes context windows. Because you've got um, seven seven cameras, and if, if you've got several. Let's say you've got a minute of several high def cameras, then that's gigabytes. So you need to compress. So the Tesla problem is you've got to compress a gigantic context um, into the the pixels that are that actually matter, um, and you know, and, and and condense that over a time in both. Uh, the time dimension, the space dimension, you've got to compress the pixels in, in space and the pixels over in time, um, and, and and then and then have that inference done on. A tiny computer, relatively speaking, a small, like you know, a few hundred watts. Uh, it's a Tesla-designed AI inference computer, uh, which is by the way still the best. There, there isn't a better thing we could buy from suppliers. You know, there's this training and inference, and we we, we do have the you know two, those two projects at Tesla. We've got Dojo, which is the the training computer, uh, and then um, you know our inference chip, which is in every every car inference computer. Um, And a Dojo, we've only had Dojo 1. Dojo 2 is, um, should be, we should have Dojo 2 in volume towards the end of next year. Um, and and that, that, that will be, we, we think, sort of co comparable to uh, the, sort of a B200 type, type system, a training system. Um, I, guess, I, I guess I have like some improved confidence in Dojo, um, but I think we, we won't really know how good Dojo is until probably version 3. Like it usually takes three major iterations on a technology 
for it to be, to be excellent. Um, and we'll only have the second major iteration next year. The third iteration, I don't know, maybe late, you know, 26 or something like that. How's the, uh, how's the Optimus um, project going? I remember when we talked last, um, and you said this publicly, that it's in doing some light testing inside the factory. Um, yeah. So it's actually being useful. What's the build of materials and when, you know, for something like that at scale? So when you start making it like you're making the Model 3 now and there's a million of them coming off the factory line, what would, the, would they cost? Twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, you think? Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, I've discovered that really that, you know, anything made in sufficient volume will asymptotically approach the cost of its, of its uh, materials. So now there's, the, there's I should say, the, there's, it's, so some things are constrained by the cost of intellectual pro property and like, paying for patents and stuff. So a lot of, you know, what, what's in a, a chip is like paying, paying royalties um, and depreciation of the chip fab. So, but the, the actual marginal cost of the chips is very low. Um, so, so, so Optimus obviously is humanoid robot. So the, you could expect that in high volume, uh, and, and I'd say that you also probably need three, three production versions of Optimus. So you need to refine the design th three, at least three major times, and, and then you need to scale production to sort of the million unit plus per year level. I think at that point, the cost, the, the, the labor and materials on Optimus is probably not much more than $10,000. Yeah, and that's a decade long journey maybe? Basically think of it like the, the Optimus will cost less than um, a, a small car. Right. So it, at, at scale volume with three major iterations of technology, and, and so if a small car you know, costs $25,000, you know, it's, it's, it's probably like a, a $20,000 for, for an Optimus, for a humanoid robot that can be your, your body like a combination of R2-D2 and C-3PO, but better. Yeah. Um, I, honestly, I think people are going to get really attached to their humanoid robot because, I mean, like you look at sort of, you watch Star Wars and it's like R2-D2 and C-3PO, I love those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, they're awesome. Um, I, I would say mid major iterations are less than two years, so okay. um, it's, it's probably on the order of Five, five years, maybe, maybe six, to get to a million units a year. And at that price point, everybody can afford one on yes. planet Earth. I mean, it's going to be that one-to-one, -one, two two-to-one. What do you think, ultimately, if we're sitting here in 30 years, the number of robots on the planet versus humans? Yeah, I think the number of robots will vastly exceed the number of humans. Vastly, Could, yeah. Vastly okay. exceed. I mean, you have to say, like, who, who would not want their robot buddy? Everyone wants a robot buddy. Totally. Um, <laughs> you know, it can... Take care of your, your take your dog for a walk. It could you know mow, mow the lawn. It, it could watch your kids. Uh, it could you know <laughs> like it could, it could teach your kids. It could it could. We could uh, also send it to Mars. I mean, yeah, absolutely. We could send a lot of robots to Mars to do the work needed to yeah. make it a colonized planet for. And humans. Mars is already the robot planet. There's like a whole bunch of yeah. you know robots. Yeah, the no, I, th I think the, the sort of useful humanoid robot opportunity is the single biggest opportunity ever. Um, because if you assume like that, I mean, the, the, I think the ratio of humanoid robots to humans is going to be at least two to one, maybe three to one, because everybody, everybody, everybody will want one, and then there will be a bunch of robots. And you think it's a general one generalized robot that then learns how to do different tasks, or yeah? Hey, um, I mean, we, we are a generalized. Uh, ro yeah, we're a generalized. <laughs> we're, we're just non -robot. We're just made of meat. Yeah, exactly. You know? uh, <laughs> we're a meat bot. A generalized <laughs> meat bot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm operating my meat puppet, you know. So, um, uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, we, we are actually, have it and, and, and by the way, it, it turns out like Tomorrow. as we we're designing Optimus, we sort of learn more and more about why humans are shaped the way they're shaped and, you know, and why we have five fingers and why your little finger is smaller than, you know, your index finger, you know, obviously why you have opposable thumbs. And presumably, I, th I think it was written that X and Tesla may work together and, you know, provide services, but my immediate thought went to, oh, if you just provide a grok to the robot, then the robot has a personality and can process oh, yeah. voice and video and images and all of that stuff. <laughs> Elon Musk는 인공지능과 그 잠재력에 대해서 무한 신뢰를 하고 있다라고 얘기할 수가 있겠죠. 특히 재밌었던 것은 대화의 주제가 LLM이라고 하죠. 언어 모델에 대한 얘기를 넘어서 자율주행 혹은 휴머노이드 로봇 시대에 우리가 어떻게 살아가야 되는가 이런 거에 초점을 맞췄다라는 게 개인적으로 흥미롭고 뭐 여전히 이쪽 신에 대해서는 좀 많이 긍정적으로 보고 계시는 것 같아요.
물론 모든 사람이 생성형 AI에 대해서 긍정적인 건 아닙니다. 뭐 대표적으로는 최근에 제가 봤던 글 중에서는 자바의 창시자이자 뭐 세계적인 개발자죠. 제임스 고슬링 같은 경우는 생성형 AI에 대해서 비판적인 얘기를 하기도 했었고요. 참고해서 보실 분들은 제가 고정 댓글에 어 번역본 링크를 달아놨으니까 참고하시면 될것 같고 그 외에도 이번 행사에서 재밌었던 게 정말 오랜만에 이분의 인터뷰를 보는 것 같은데 구글의 창업자죠. 세르게이 브린의 인터뷰도 있었기 때문에 계속 업계에 있는 분들의 얘기 를 들으면 또 우리의 인공지능에 대한 생각들이 좀 뚜렷해지지 않을까 라는 생각을 하면서 셀게이블이 인터뷰도 제가 한번 보고 재밌으면 공유 드리도록 하겠습니다. 그리고 제가 또 스터디를 모집하니까 궁금하신 분들은 고정 댓글 참고해 주시고요. 그럼 저는 또 테크뉴스 주식뉴스로 돌아오도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.